Hello and welcome to the fourth video tutorial of After Effects. Today we're going to learn about something called tracking and we're going to learn about how to stabilize Seki videos and then how to add in extra contents to the uh, uh, video footage and make it seem as if it belongs in the video. So let me just import a video right here. That's planethollywood.mov. Let me just import that. And then let's double click on the video and let's play it to see how it looks right now. And as you can see, the video is a bit shaky. So let's do some tracking magic over uh, to this video and then stabilize the footage. So let me just drag this video onto my composition. So let me just play it and see how it looks right here. So this video is quite shaky. So what I want to do first is I want to track this video. So this is very useful for um, those shaky footages which you get from handy cams or from SLR cameras. To do that, let us go to Windows and let us go to something called Tracker right over here at the bottom. Let us click on that. Let us click on Tracker and then uh, I'm going to select this footage. And to select this footage, I, I simply select this and as you can see, there are four options over here. So now I'm going to uh, click on stabilize motion right over here to stabilize this footage. That's the basic thing we're going to start off with first. So let me just click that. And as you can see, as I do that, a little track point appears which I can drag around and choose. So I'm going to drag around this a bit. I'm going to drag around. I'm going to drag around this little square. And if I were to click and hold the center in, in between and drag it, you can see that I can drag into a spot I want. So now I'm going to put this at a spot where there is a bit of contrast and there's no movement at all. So like if I were to put this over here at the car, then the car is moving so the stabilizer won't work. So I'm going to go over to the side, over to this billboard and make sure that the cross air lies exactly uh, near the contrast area. So that's where the track point is. And realize this, there is another window that is for the shaky areas. If the video moves too much, then the area got to be lost. While if the video moves less, then the area got to be less. So I'm just going to keep this around this point. And since there is um, no other point, I, I can also like, let's say, um, I can choose the type of the tracker. This is the stabilize. I can also choose rotation. And what it does is it gives me a second point so that it also can stabilize the rotation. So I'm going to do the same, drag it over to the other area. Let me say over here so that it also stabilizes the rotation. In this video, I do not really have a scale stabilization needed because the camera is in one place and uh, we don't have any zoom in and out effect on the video. So I'm going to uh, leave the scale out. So now, once I do that, I'm going to drag my uh, camera cursor over to the beginning. Let me just um, start this from the beginning. Let me just uh, reposition them. Make sure that the cursor is at the beginning. That is very, very important. So let me just do that and then press play right over here. That is analyze. So let me just play that. Let us see if this can automatically uh, track the footage. So as you can see, it takes some time. So let us wait. Let me fast forward this for you. And that's done. And as you can see over here, it has tracked uh, the whole footage and the video is still shaky. So uh, to apply this, um, uh, to reduce the shakiness, I actually have to apply this. And once I click apply, notice what happens. So now make sure that you are on this timeline, uh, you're not on the other window, on the composition window, that, but you are on the layer window. So let's just uh, click apply and I'm going to apply this to X and Y. I'm not going to apply this to Z or zoom in. Okay, you can just apply this to X only or Y only, but I'm going to apply this to both X and Y axis. Press OK. And you can see over here, these are the keyframes that it created for us uh, so that it looks like it is stabilizing. So once I play this, you can actually see that the video, you, you see the shakiness right over here. That's the shakiness of the video. Okay. So I do not want to see the black bars right over here. So what I want to do is I want to eliminate this uh, black bar. 
So now what I'm simply going to do is right click on this, uh, click on and choose something called pre-compose. I'm going to move all the bad attributes into the new composition. Press OK. And then I can resize the video a bit so that I do not see the black bars. And boom, you got a pretty stable footage right here. So this is how you stabilize the footage, how you stabilize the shaky footage you get out of a video camera. But this is not just the um, effect that you get out of the tracker. You, you actually have a lot of other features you can get out of tracker. So now let us see some other tricks. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, select the in and out point of the video. Let me not, let me just uh, select some part of the video. Let's say, let me start from this part. Just few, a few seconds so that I can show a faster workflow for you guys. And then create a new composition. So now I got the same shaky video footage over here. So suppose I do not have time to actually select the track points. Of course, that will give me a much more precise result. But if I do not want to do that, I can simply select the uh, video and then press something called Warp Stabilizer right here. It's available from uh, Adobe After Effects CS6 only and it is available from in the newer versions as well. So I can simply click on that and as you can see, it does an automatic analyzing in the background and then it tries to correct the shakiness of the footage as much as it can itself. So it's analyzing in the background. This will take a bit of time and it's stabilizing. And as you can see, now the video is quite stabilized. It is a bit shaky. So if you want to increase the smoothness level, you can go over to the left, increase the smoothness level. And then also like say, choose other options over here, like how much you want to crop and so forth. So now this is not perfect as we did with manual tracking, but this is something which you can get on the go and then um, it does a quick trick for you. So now let us continue and let us move on to our next effect and we are going to cover up something called parenting. Before we move on to the next effect, we need to know something regarding parenting. Par Before we go on to the next effect, we got to know something about uh, parenting. So for that, we are going to create a new composition and over here, I'm going to create two shapes individually in different layers. So now as you can see over here, these layers act independently. I can move this shape and I can move this shape. Suppose what I want to do is I want to uh, make this the parent of this shape right here. So as you can see, this shape is this shape right over here, the topmost layer. Let me drag it down so that it will be easier for me. I'm going to make this as a parent. And over here, you can see the pick whip that says parent. If you do not see this, try uh, toggling out the buttons right over here at the bottom and you'll get the parent right over here. So I'm going to drag this. I'm going to have this as a child. So I'm going to drag the pick whip off, pick whip off the child and keep it on the shape above. So if I do that, this is what parenting, uh, now the parenting has occurred. So you can see that if I move this shape, this shape moves along with it. But if I were to move this shape, this shape stays where it is and only the shapes moves around. But if I were to drag the shape again, both the shapes move because, because like this is the parent shape and this is the child shape. So whenever I move the parent, the child moves along with it. And whenever I move the child, it is independent on its own. So now let me delete one of the layer and similar to that, I have something called a null object. If I were to right click and click new, uh, I, I can see an option called null object. And once I do that, I actually get a blank object right here, which is the square box right here. So if I were to drag this around, this is something you won't see in the video, but only in the editing um, composition. This is a null object. It's called null because it is nothing. Uh, it is just a controller. So what I can simply do is I can parent this shape onto the null as well so that I can move the null object and you can see that the child moves along with it. This is known as parenting. So if I were to move this along the way, then this is uh, just the child and it doesn't uh, move the null object. But if I move the null object, you can actually see that the child moves along with it. I can also create another shape, another shape. And then uh, what I can do is I can link 
this shape to the null object as well. So I'm going to drag this and link it to the null object. And when I move around the null object, you can actually see both the shapes moves along with it. But when I move the shapes individually, it moves separately. So this is useful for uh, tracking things onto the video footage. So what do I mean by that? Let us just check it out. So I'm going to drag this Planet Hollywood uh, footage and make another composition right here. And let's say I want to uh, track an image onto some place over here in the video footage. So what I'm going to do is, let's see, let's see where I can actually add in some extra stuff. So what I'm going to do is, you, you see this little video over here, what I want to do is I want to replace this video with a video of my own. So I'm going to do that with the help of tracking. So this is playing right here. So I'm going to track this, I'm going to track this. Let me just see, let me just see the footage over here. If it moves off screen then it'll be hard for us. So I'm going to track this. This time we're not tracking for stabilizing the footage, we're tracking to, in order to add another video footage right over here. So I'm going to, uh, let's say, track motion and the new window pops up again. Let me just uh, scale this a bit and then put this point right over here. And you can see the video is actually moving right here. So let me just uh, drag this down or let me choose another point. Okay, this seems more like it. There's no motion. There's motion on this video so that it'll be quite hard to uh, for the uh, tracker to actually analyze the area. So I'm going to keep this over here. Since I want rotation as well, I'm going to add in another rotation. I'm going to put this over here at the bottom, somewhere around. Okay, let's choose this point. Okay, so that it tracks the footage. So let me just track this. Let me just track this. Let's press analyze. Make sure that the cursor is at the beginning so that I um, am tracking it from the beginning itself. So analyze forward. It's analyzing good. Oh, okay. Wait. So you can actually see that the tracker didn't actually track well over here. So I need to choose another point maybe that, that doesn't go off screen over here at the right. Okay, this won't go off screen and then track again. So let's track. Okay, it's tracking well. Okay, did that track well? Let me just play this and see this again for myself. So let me just uh, play that out. Let me just press space. I'm not going to place the analyze button over here. It'll start the restart the tracking uh, option. Okay, so I guess it's tracking well. So now what I want to do is I want to attach a null object over here and I want to do that because I want to attach a new video. I'm going to parent the new video onto the null object I create. Now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to right click and create a new null object right over here. So once I do that, I can go to go to edit target right over here and you can see the null is automatically selected. So I'm going to select the null object. I can even rename this if I want to, but uh, let me just skip that and just press apply. Of course, I want both X and Y. And once I do that, you can see the null object right over here. So if I were to play this, the null, uh, yeah, as you can see, the null object moves around with uh, the footage right over here. So I'm going to attach another video footage right here, right here, okay. So now I'm going to import another video footage. Let me uh, choose the morning sky over here. Let me drag the morning sky onto the footage panel at the top because I want the layer at the top. Let me just drag this down, maybe resize this, okay. And then resize it. Okay, let me just uh, put this cursor at the top. Let me resize this. Okay. Okay, I guess like that about does the trick. I'm going to use the arrow keys in order to nudge it even well. Okay, I guess that's about the, did the trick. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to move the cursor. As you can move the cursor, uh, the video doesn't stick to the uh, frame yet. So I'm going to make sure that my cursor is at the beginning when I do all the things. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to parent this onto my null object like this, just like I did with those shapes back then. 
parent this and voila. So you can see the video has actually attached over here um, in the screen. Okay, and it looks as if this is the part of the footage. So I can do that with many other things like list this little video over there. Let me drag another clip over here. Let me drag this, drag the San Francisco clip, drag this down. And as the motion of the entire footage is similar, it does not matter if I parent it to the same thing. I'm going to make sure that the video um, cursor is at the beginning. Let me just uh, scale it down. Let me zoom it in so that it will be easier for me to handle it. Drag it down. Okay, drag it up. Yes, that's it. Okay, so now I'm going to parent this onto the null object. Let me zoom it out. And you can see that both the video actually plays quite well now. And it seems as if it is the part of the same footage. And this is the magic of tracking. So now, uh, let me add in some extra text to make it seem uh, good. Let me just uh, create a new text over here. So this is the magic of tracking. Let me select all and then change the font color to white. Or maybe change the S color to something like black so that I can read that text. Let me resize it. Okay, let me add in some effect onto this layer as well. So I'm going to show you a new effect again. I can simply go over here to effects and preset. I'm going to type in an effect called paint on and we are in the power region. So we are going to choose power. I'm going to drag this effect onto the magic of tracking and you can see that the text appears. Okay, I can still change the uh, type of the effect over here. Uh, I can move around the start, the end, the stroke width. Uh, let me just go over to the center so that you can actually see the effect. So I can actually change the angle as you can see of the effect. So this is true for all the effects. For all the effects you get a control over here at the left which you can change uh, later on. So now I got a different effect like this. So this is it. Okay, so let me export the video and we go over to project. So this Planet Hollywood 3 is the composition I want to export. So I'm going to select Planet Hollywood 3. It's uh, important to select the composition you want to export. So let me just select this. Let me, let me go over to file. Let me export it. Let me export it. Let me add it to render queue. Let me change the settings to QuickTime. It's S.264. Everything is fine. There's no audio, so turn it off. Press OK. And then I'm going to name this as Tracking footage and press save and then render. Okay, and that's done. So let me go over to the tracking footage over here. Let me go over to tutor tube and let me go over to the tracking footage. Let me open it with VLC. And this is what the video looks like. Okay. So this video seems to be in place. It looks as if it is the part of the original video. And this is the basics of what compositing means. So now stay tuned for more of the video tutorials in the future. And we'll make sure we'll cover more interesting stuff in After Effects. Please comment, like, subscribe and share.